A variety of people have suggested that here we are responding to a threat, and I want to tell you that I'm not taking the action that I'm going to take in response to a threat. And I'm certainly not taking it for the perspective of dealing with optics. What I think we have here is the opportunity to seize available dollars to do something that we have to do inevitably anyway. And I don't think that we have to do it inevitably anyway because it's being mandated, although that is perhaps legally the case. I think that we have to do it inevitably because we have to treat our sewage. What we do have here, and I believe Director German suggested this, is an obligation. And I think of it more almost as if it's a duty of care. It's a duty of care to look ahead and see what it is that we need to do responsibly looking to the future generations and what they expect from us. Is this the best possible plan? No. Do I have serious reservations about it? Yes, I do. But I have to believe that the work that's been done before I came to the table and with the colleagues that I've had the pleasure of working with in the last year, we have really tried very, very hard to take the pieces that have been handed to us by the province and the federal government and to change them in a way which has allowed the CRD, both through this committee and as a board, to take as much responsibility and authority and control of the unfolding of the process as possible. I think we have to treat our sewage not because we're told to, but because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for the region now, and it's the right thing to do for the region, and I think the whole area of the province in the future, and for my kids, and my kids' kids, and all of us. I can't support suspending further action if it means that we don't move forward. Unfortunately, I have to reject Director German's suggestion as a motion and I will eventually be supporting moving ahead on the plan. It's interesting what I hear around the table. This is not about not treating our sewage. This is about ensuring a better plan, exactly what Director Isaac is wanting, a better plan. We can do better. Today, we, who have put, been placed here to express our constituents' voices, we potentially make a decision from which we commit our region, our taxpayers, to a significant burden of cost, one that many cannot or will not be able to afford. Even worse, we're doing this for secondary sewage treatment, which is, it's argued, is not better than what is occurring now. And the land effect could be significantly worse. It won't reduce the pollution from stormwater runoff, nor will it reduce significantly, significantly the chemicals, which are the greater harm to the marine environment. We have heard in the past from a peer review team in 2010, they had significant concerns with this project as we were putting it forward. They, have consist they had significant concerns with McLaughlin Point concerning the size of the site, with the realities of climate change such as storm surge and rising waters. There were several pages of concerns about this site. And in fact, that peer group recommended alternative sites. The biosolids management currently under Amendment 8 at Heartland Landfill in a piped system 18 kilometers away in an area where we have uh, a significant risk of earthquake where we have been recommended not to put things underground because of the risk of infrastructure underground. It's 18 kilometers to an elevation equivalent of 50-story building and through residential areas. In June 2010, we made a significant different decision than the direction we'd been going in May of 2010. Why? for the reasons you see in the staff report today, potential loss of funding. Again, I draw you back that this is not about not treating. It's about a best plan. 
We are the elected people of this region. The region has significant infrastructure needs, this only being one. Is this plan the best way to get waste management and resource recovery? Is this the time to burden the region with this cost? Does this plan outweigh all other requirements for the near future? Those are the decisions we're making. It will be difficult to get funding for other projects with the amount of funding that's being committed to this project. As politicians, we have been elected to take care of the residents' tax dollars and stewards of the well-being of our community. We need to ask ourselves, do we have all the information to set this in motion at this time? If not, is it responsible of us to move forward without the full information? And we do have gaps. We have no idea at this point the completion of the biosolids part of the process and the cost implications to that. Based on the information and the dialogue of the past month, there's too many unknowns. We must, at CRD here, fill in the gaps. And it's a disservice to the residents of CRD if we don't fill in those gaps. I would have loved the opportunity to go out to the, uni to the industry and have them tell us what is possible and at what cost to deal with the real issues here. It comes down to not whether to treat or not. It comes down to this. This is the wrong plan. It can be done better. And we need to look at how do we do that better. And these motions before you today are merely saying, let's take that small step back to reflect that and make sure that we are doing the very, very best. There are other plans out there, even within this province, that we can learn by. And it may be that we don't have to defer long uh, or even miss these deadlines. But if we don't look at what best cause we can have, we do not do the residents of this region a good service. They need to be heard, and they have spoken in the last month. Thank you. Thank you, Director Hamilton. Thank you. Um, it's been a real difficult uh, position going back and forth with all of this, and, and the amount of reading has been immense. Um, I'm not a scientist. I am not in any way, shape, qualified to determine what lies below our ocean and the effect that that's having. Um, but I know that in my heart, it's not appropriate to be flushing things down. So I totally support moving forward as far as treatment. Where I feel we get stuck is in, in uh, correspondence that I have and, and in the information, and I'm just going to stick to uh, statements that I have here, is the province has set out clear guidelines, and we're stuck on item one being meet the regulatory standard for liquid waste. So the plan's been put in motion. We're not looking at what they've also mandated examine the opportunity to save money, transfer risk, and add value through public-private partnerships. I haven't heard the answers to those questions at this table. So I feel the process has been very open and it has engaged the public. This is a large project to be built out over many, many years. During that time, many technologies will come and they'll go. But this plan anticipates with flexibility that it will provide for the future advances in technology. We don't have to wait 20 years for something to come along. We can do it now and move ahead. There is a common sense that says, position that says, you've got to leave it as clean or better than when you were here. That's well regarded and it speaks to us all, I think, when we're looking to where we live, where we put our feet. On the other side, folks, there's, uh, we have a challenge, and it's called the will of the public. I just went through an exercise, and it was hard won. And I can speak to you with some real sincerity when I say that unless we have 
a greater majority of people in our region supporting what we are trying to do here, we in this room, those that are holding seats now, will have a very significant issue with the public. You will. The elephant is awake. The, you know, it's a time, my, my premise was, it's a time to really think. It's a billion dollar question. There's been a lot of comment made that now we've got to bite it or otherwise the costs will go up. Now we've got to bite it because, blah, and so on. The regional people know that we cannot hide in this room behind having run a referendum of some kind. It's ours to wear. Ours, individually. And when you think about it, and then you have to ask yourself, is three quarters of a billion or perhaps more closer to a billion, how we want to go forward without having the people on the streets strongly supporting us? And how can we win that position? What are the means that we bring to bear that says to, our, to those people we represent, we have done all the diligence, we have done all those good things, and when we look at this compared to other situations, this is the best we can do. And therefore, come with us, support us, because we are your agents in this. What are we going to do about that? The Derman and the Jardins motion was clearly not opposed to treatment. It suggested that there are better solutions to protect the environment. But the motion was defeated. A rhetorical question, however, was made by Mayor Graham Hill. Should the 14 directors take the sole authority to decide on this controversial billion dollar project? Or should there be a referendum to include all of us citizens? This enlightened question by Mayor Graham Hill is precisely what this little booklet suggests, perpetual direct democracy. Major political decisions should be done by referendum. You can order this booklet from Amazon.com or you can read it online at pacific.ca. I am Pedro Mora.